Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to continue talking about the equine female reductive system. In the previous uh, anatomy tutorial we talked about the anatomy of the uh, ovary and the surrounding structures including the mesovarium and the suspensory ligament of the ovary. The proper ligament of the ovary extends between the ovary to the tip of the uterine horn. We talked also about the uterine tube and its parts including the infundibulum, ambula and isthmus. The mesosalpinx. We talked also about the anatomy of the uterus and cito. And in this tutorial, we will talk about the anatomy of the female reductive system, but in a pregnant mare. But before we start, you know, let's look at the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is fixed with the middle ligament of the urinary bladder to the linea alba, as you can see here. Laterally, we can uh, see the lateral ligaments of the urinary bladder, left and right. At the free end of this ligament, we can also see the round ligament of the urinary bladder. Here and between the uh, urinary bladder and the uterus, we can find the vesicogenital uh, pouch, this one here. And now let's look at the uterus with the uterine horns, as you can see here. Uh, here we can find that the ovary is fixed uh, to the diaphragm by the suspensory ligament of the ovary. This one here extends to the diaphragm. The mesovarium fixes the ovary to the dorsolateral uh, wall of the abdominal cavity. Is continued caudally with the mesometrium, forming what's called the broad ligament of the uterus, ligamentum latum uteri. From the lateral surface of the broad ligament of the uterus, we have here the round ligament of the uterus uh, uh, moves toward the inguinal canal as you can see here the ovarian borza is formed by laterally the mesovarium and mesosalpinx this one here and medially by the proper ligament of the ovary so this is here the proper ligament of the ovary in equine the ovulation occurs into what's called the ovulation fossa this is the ovulation fossa here. Next to the ovulation fossa, we have the infundibulum, the first part of the uterine tube. Uh, here we have the uh, abdominal ostium of the infundibulum uh, up to the ambula and finally to the isthmus of the uterine tube. The uterine tube extends between the ovary and moves caudally to the tip of the uterine horn, as you can see here. The mesovarium in equine is about 15 cm long and that's why the ovary is located 15 cm caudal to the kidney. Between the two uterine horns, uh, we can find the intercornual ligament. This is the intercornual ligament. That one is the uterine body. And here between the uterus and the rectum, we have the rectogenital pouch. Dorsally over there, we can find the rectum with the mesorectum, which forms dorsally both, you know, parietal fossa on each side. This is a uterus of a pregnant uh, mare, and that's why if we look exactly, we can palpate also the fetus inside. In this area here, this is the fetus. And now let's open the uterus and look what we can find there. And now while we are opening the uterus, let's look at the different layers of the uterine wall. From outside we have the perimetrium, inside there we have the endometrium and between we have the myometrium.
After we open the uterus, we can see the fetal membranes, including the corneal membrane, this one here. If we open the corneal membrane, we can see how the fetus is swimming inside the fluid there and surrounded by the amnion membrane. And here we have the umbilical cord. Where we can find the umbilical arteries and veins. In this fetus, as you can see, is relatively developed in the way that we can see the ears, the eyes, the mouth, the forelimbs, the hind limbs are completely developed. Here we can notice how the fetus is surrounded by the amnion which is filled with the amniotic fluid as you can see here. So we can see even nerves inside the muscles, we can see the ribs and the internal organs inside the abdomen through the abdominal wall. In this view, we can clearly see the yolk sac, this one here, and the umbilical arteries and veins. As we learned before, you know, inside the umbilical cord, we can find two umbilical arteries, one umbilical vein and one orachos. So, the yolk sac is very clear here. And now let's uh, put the fetus into the normal position inside the fetal membranes and finally into the uterus. And in the next uh, tutorial, we will try to uh, study the comparative anatomy of the female reproductive system between different animal species.